What is the range of cost it could be to install an EV charger in your home? Well, believe it or not, it's somewhere between 500 and 5,000. Why such a broad range? Well, here's how you can figure out what your setup might cost you. How's it going everybody? It's Brandon with Electrical Specialist. And on this episode of Ask Your Local Electrician, we're gonna be continuing the series of the EV charger installation and what does it cost? Um, now, like we've mentioned, it could be any, a typical broad paintbrush here of cost could be anywhere from 500 to 5,000. Obviously that's quite a range and we're talking about why. So getting into that, we're gonna to go to a few simple four-step basics. So let's just go site assessment, meaning where's the panel located? Is the panel in the garage right next to where you're gonna put the charger? Obviously that's optimum. Unfortunately, that's usually never the case. Uh, it's usually somewhere else. So is it across the house? Is it upstairs? Is it outside? Is it on a different building? Uh, sometimes it's on the garage. So I mean, it, there's a lot of things to take into account here. And sometimes we'll even place the EV charger in a different location to make it more budget friendly. So that's something we want to look at as a site assessment. And then does the panel, the load capacity, uh, can it handle it? Is it already maxed out? You might want someone to do a load calculation on the panel and find out, are you all electric? Are you already maxed out? Do you have a electric um, furnace? That's, that, that's a lot of power. If you only have a hundred amp service and electric furnace, you're probably maxed. Uh, do you have an older electrical system with a hot tub on it, multiple laundries, multiple kitchens? You know, we want to know these things. You definitely don't want to have it installed and find out your main is going to trip. That's something we want to avoid. So that's something you want to look at. Uh, you're going to want to get permits and inspections. I know it's a common thing to try to avoid these, but I always insist it's only for your own good every time. You, if you were to have an inspector come out and even fail the process, he's doing it to protect you either from something going wrong later or something going wrong now. It's only for your own good. So never be afraid of a permanent inspection. It's actually your best friend. So um, another factor could be wiring and distance. Again, is it five feet away from the panel or is it across the house? Uh, the wiring size, is it 30 amps? Is it 50 amps? We're obviously talking 240. So it's gonna be a larger wire, depending on, depending on how fast you want it to charge. There's even some 100 amp ones for larger vehicles. So you can imagine, uh, you know, these post-COVID prices are pretty high on wire and copper. And when you're gonna just keep making that wire bigger and bigger and traveling a long distance, you can expect more cost to be involved. Um, and the last one is setup and testing. There is gonna be, of course, labor intensive, uh, depending on how, Intricate the device is, some of them need tuned. Uh, for instance, Tesla has a multi-tap where we can run like an 80 amp uh, feed to the charger and then you can tone it down. That way you're setting it up for the future. So you can go 30 amps now, 60 amps later. Those are ideal, we'll get to more of those later. So let's do a rough cost breakdown. So what charger style is it? That's what we're gonna look at first. Is it that three-step tap? or is it just a simple plug-in NEMA 30 or 50? Uh, that's, that will change the price greatly depending just upon that. Uh, then of course, installation, labor, I would always encourage you to ask the warranty. Uh, whatever licensed contractor you're using, I would just question, is this a tail light warranty, a one-year warranty, a five-year warranty, or like we do give lifetime warranties for our members? That would be ideal in something like this because those things get hot. The parts can go bad. Again, something we want to uh, talk about a little more later, but you definitely want to look into the warranty. Um, another item is the panel upgrade. Uh, is your panel old? Is it outdated? Does it, you know, is it rusting on a basement wall? Is it full of corrosion? When a lot of times we go to look at these things and add stuff to panels, um, sometimes that thing is, you know, it's been needed change for a long time. It's like your old car. It's got 300,000 miles on it. It's seen better days. It's just time to pull that trigger and get that done. If you're in need or wanting to know if your panel is outdated or in need of replacement, 
We just did a video series on this to be perfect for you. I'll link it in the description. You can take a look at it there. Um, another one we want to talk about is avoiding mistakes. I think that's how we're going to really close this one out and wrap it up and say, this is an installation you're probably going to put a little bit of investment to. Let's make sure that it's done right. Here's some simple mistakes we want to avoid. One, skipping permits and inspections. Again, the inspector's your best friend. Permits are your best friend. They're very cost effective. They are not going to up the price of your project. You want them. Sometimes you're out in the county and you can't have them. I wish that you they did. But if you're in a city and they have them available, please make sure that your licensed professional gets one. Uh, number two, undersizing wire. Depending on who you get, whether you get multiple bids from contractors, they may try to downsize the wire to save on budgeting and win the job. Or maybe, maybe you're convinced that running 30 amps is enough. Just know that you can't run 30 amp wire and then change it to 50 later. So if this is an invasive installation where they're running across your entire house, I would highly suggest you go ahead and run the larger wire now to not be tempted to run a bigger circuit later or put it on a bigger breaker, which is then putting a giant fire hazard in your family's home. So run the bigger wire now, don't undersize it. Uh, last one is don't buy the wrong charger. We definitely see this happen. It doesn't happen a lot, but I know most of you are pretty excited when you get your new electric vehicle. You look through all the information, but definitely look in there in the manufacturer's information and the specs. It'll tell you what style of charger to buy, if it's 120 or 240, what brands you can buy. A lot of them are general use and you can put in a NEMA 30 or 50, but some of them need specific chargers with specific translations of the voltage. You definitely don't want to mess that up on your new investment. Make sure you get that done right. In our next video, we're going to talk about what's all covered by safety and code. We're going to talk about future proofing this because this is a nice investment. You want to make sure that it's done right for the long term. So make sure to check that one out. Also like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of these or have any questions, leave them in the comments. And above all, thank you for watching. Thank you.